What's up, Vulnerability Muscle fam? Just wanted you to know that new episodes of Vulnerability Muscle are going to drop May 6th. That's Monday, May 6th. The next season of Vulnerability Muscle will drop. So mark your calendars. But in the meantime, I hope you enjoy some of these clips from season one. Please like, subscribe, share these episodes with everybody that you know so that they can get a taste of Vulnerability Muscle. In the meantime, keep flexing that Vulnerability Muscle. Yeah using that privilege as power to help other people. And that is something that this was, was, was all about. And then also helping people understand that if you got into a therapy session, it'll be a lot like this (laughs) with somebody who's qualified to ask you questions, to help you uh, dig deeper. And so these, 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 this first season, uh, it was it was therapy sessions for my brothers, man. That's what it yeah. was. <laughs> <laughs> I can confirm that for you. I needed that conversation when we had it, you know. So what you built here is definitely. I hope that it's helping the listeners as much as it's helping the person being interviewed, you know. And I think I'm at that place in my life now to where um, it's less energy um, to just be open than it yes. is for me to not talk about things, not be cool. But yet I'm overthinking and that, you know, I'm having this depression. I'm having anxiety. Uh, all these other things are really happening to me. I, I, I just now got to the point now that I can actually listen to music and I can start understanding words again. Uh-huh. Uh, and now I'm realizing the more that I'm shedding a lot of these burdens, the more I'm able to feel again. I'm able to see again. I'm The colors are brighter for me again. Uh, the words are actually there and I can hear them now. Uh, but that took a wow. lot of. Uh, the, the fact of just being honest with myself and saying, you know what, uh, it's time to let these burdens down. But I think if we dig deeper for the black man, I believe that we don't have the platform or the um, the openness to be vulnerable to our families and to our friends and the people that know us because it's like, get the job done, suck it up. Nobody wants to hear your excuses. You know, and for so long, they 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 tell uh, black people, black men, that we make excuses. We make excuses why we don't get ahead. We make excuses why we're not uh, good fathers. We whatever whatever the narrative is, we we they they say we make excuses. So in tune, we have to eat it up and get the job done. I feel guilty for missing it because it was the next day, like literally phone on silent, took that test, walk into the next class, you know, and yeah. I get in the class and I look at the phone, it's just missed calls and texts yeah. and voice messages and, you yeah. know, and a little, even deeper, man, I know people don't like really, I don't know what people believe, but I actually like the moment that my uncle told me that my dad passed away, I saw that in a dream maybe a year or two before, Wow, you know what I mean? Wow. Like, like that exact moment. So I didn't even react first to yeah. that feeling. It was kind of like a, like you know, a shock. Like wait, I felt I, this before. You know, like this is I see like the exact. I'm looking, you know, the exact view of when I'm, and then it kind of hit me. I'm like, what, you know? And he broke down, and after yeah. that, man, it was just a blur. You know, it was just a blur for like the next few years, honestly. My, my senior night game that we talked about before, you know, I stayed. Like we almost couldn't go to dinner that night because I stayed and signed every wow. single person autograph who wanted me to, took pictures with them and their kids, and like we shutting down the gym, like folks, like cleaning up, like yo, y'all gotta get out of here, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But like that's just who I am in my heart because that's how I was yep. raised. You never take people for granted, man, because they not they not they not trying to get everybody autograph, right? Exactly, like, yeah, right. Like they not trying to take a picture with everybody. Exactly. Man. You know, they, they weren't even trying to take pictures with everybody on the team. Whew. Right. Like, and so you just never, never take that for granted. Man. I specifically decided not to go to the varsity locker rooms, obviously, because then I knew that people were going to see me cry. So I went into the junior school locker rooms and that's where I cried. And when I started to feed or I started to see that people were coming in, I went into the athletic room because at the time I remember, uh, uh, what's his name? Chad Breedlove. <laughs> And I Shout said, hey, Chad, Chad, let man. me, uh, can I, can I, can I stay in here for a little bit and just close the door? He said, yeah. And so again, it was the constant, okay, like I cannot let them see me. Cry. I cannot let them see that they won, right? Because I knew that always they want, somebody always wanted a reaction out of me. And what's, what happened is nobody got a reaction out of me then. But unfortunately, because I let that fast roll through all those years, all these reactions came to what I'm about to tell you now. You know, there were all these other times that. 
things looked better and finding it in that moment allowed me to have this moment, you know? And, and so, so yeah, I mean, I think that finding a way to get to the core of what's going on with you is going, is going to be vulnerable. Like there's, there's kind of no way to get to the truth of, of who you are without exposing yourself. And, and I think even people that have a hard time doing it in life, um, which I often do, you know, yeah. art, art is a place that I almost feel, I feel responsible to the work. It's like, I can't, I can't lie about this. And yeah. so in telling the truth about that, everything else comes to fruition. You know, um, you know, we, we, we talked about, about Tara and, you know, our relationship, which has had so many, um, you know, different iterations, but, you know, partly in making this, this body of work was, you know, getting into some of those, um, you know, some of those spaces and, and really, yeah, really kind of, kind of opening, opening that side of like, you know, the, the, the things that, that have been really, really dear to me and really, really important and, and really hard to admit, like needing somebody, yeah. you know, like saying like, man, this, this person really like pulled me through this thing. She's one of the most brilliant people I know. Um, and she talked about how like we get broken in a relationship, but also we heal in a relationship. Yes. Yeah. Um, so understanding that like, just because we get broken in certain relationships doesn't necessarily mean that we need to shut the door on relationships. Because like you said, um, building interper- interpersonal connections when you've been through trauma and been through um, been through fractures in relationships, a lot of times there's a, there's a hesitance there because you're like, man, I want to protect myself. I don't want to get hurt. But that's just the nature of life, right? Like we're all going to get into other relationships that are, are going to hurt us, right? Like we're going to trust people that we shouldn't trust and different things. But I think at the end of the day, love is way too powerful and way too healing to 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 not fully engulf yourself in it when there's a possibility of it. So um, yeah, that's what these stories are just telling me, man. A lot of the challenges that we hear when we work with athletes, they say they don't trust the staff because they think it's going to get back to the coach, and if it gets back to my coach, like we just discussed, and so and that was my experience working at Tennessee State. I mm-hmm. had to earn the trust of the athletes to know that what they discuss with me is not going to get back to the coach because I mean, just to be frank, some of the stuff could get, get you suspended. You yeah. know what I mean? Like it can get you kicked off the team. And what happens if you get, get kicked off a team and you're an athlete, you lose your scholarship, Man. you lose your whole opportunity to be in college. Right. So some of this I need to keep <laughs> yeah. personal. Right. And so we want to be one of the leading agencies that is not affiliated with the school that we can come in and help provide our services to student athletes, psychoeducation services, and I think looking back now, it's just like, like, why didn't you do more to stop or at least reduce her effect on us kids? Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, so it was hurt there. Um, but like I said, I think what what helped me heal was therapy. But the main thing, honestly, was my wife, bro. Like. It was just her being her and just showing me her unconditional love and showing me what unconditional love looked like. Mm-hmm. Um, it just, it showed me that there was another way to be and there was another way to live life that I didn't have to be constantly on guard and always trying to fight a motherfucker, you know what I mean? Or trying to like react to something or always trying to like watch my back because, you know, I don't know if. I don't know if something I said to you ticked you off enough to where like, does that make sense? Like you want to yeah. like um, fight me or you want to like start an argument and shit like that. But with mm-hmm. her, it was just complete opposite. Right. Mm-hmm. And so that's really where a lot of my healing came from was mm. my relationship with my wife um, and beautiful. just her being her and just her showing me unconditional love and just um, showing me what it looks like to have somebody constantly in your corner and somebody who really, really loves you and somebody who, um, um, who is on your team, like literally. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, yeah, it took me a while. It took me, it took me a while to recognize that and to accept that. Uh, thankfully through therapy, I was able to go through therapy and talk a lot about that stuff. Um, but yeah, bro, that, that relationship healed me a lot. What are your thoughts on that? So, uh, currently going to therapy, I have my appointment tomorrow at five. 
Um, but I had just gone um, back to therapy recently. Uh, I've been uninsured for a while, so that has been like a barrier. And um, the other things, uh, when I was when I've gotten in trouble with school and things like that, ironically, so I, I was seeing therapy there, but then ironically, uh, when I needed therapy the most, like you know, oh, you no longer have access to the health insurance or this or that. So that was the other big piece for me is understanding that like this, the way systems are built, when you need help the most, you lose it, especially for somebody who coming from a low socioeconomic, you know, background. If you don't have access, if you're not in these schools, you don't have, you know, steady access to health insurance, right? If you're not always employed, like, you know, 40 hours, you don't have steady access to health insurance. These are the barriers to people who are feeling, you know, distress or, you know, feeling difficulties during their time. So I wish I've always had access to insurance when I needed it the most, but it's not always been that way. Uh, currently seeing it and we haven't really focused on my family because I feel like I really think like there should be more opportunities for free for youth. Um, what is middle or high school age youth to be able to be able to travel and explore and just think about you know how I don't even know if they do this anymore Reggie but remember like in, in our younger days we would take like like field trips it mm-hmm. would be like a thing I don't know if kids take field trips like like we used to take yeah. field trips in grade school and stuff but that was part of exploring and getting outside of your community right. and I wish like that was that would just be a bond, uh, burning desire for me man it's like whatever I can do to help people kind of get beyond their, you know, that silo or their, you know, existing community mm-hmm. to really kind of get outside it and see how other people are living, thinking, eating, speaking, or whatever that may be, man. And so, like, that's just like if what if I can encourage people to 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 do that to really yeah. explore, and that's why, man, I don't, it, I care about a lot of issues like many other people, right? Hey, man, it showed me something about myself because a lot of time I wonder why I struggle with some of the things I struggle with is because I've allowed the enemy to have a seat at my table. And I'm talking about the enemy as far as like negative stuff, like yeah. negative overtones, negative stuff that comes into our life. We're allowed to just sit at our table and we just cool with it. Now, don't be cool with it, man. Push yeah. that stuff out the table. Get yeah. them off your get. No, you can't sit right here, dude. Mm-hmm. Yeah, depression. No, you mm-hmm. can't sit right here. Right. Anxiety. Mm-hmm. No, you can't sit here. You know what I'm saying? All that negative, you cannot sit here. But when I allow that stuff to sit at my table, then that's when I become influenced by who's at my table. What's up, Vulnerability Muscle fam? I hope you enjoyed season one of Vulnerability Muscle. If you haven't already done so, check out all 12 episodes of Vulnerability Muscle season one and tell me who is your favorite guest. What is your favorite quote? Let me know. Send a message. Send a DM. Send something so that I know what you resonate with. Be looking forward to season two of Vulnerability Muscle that is set to drop on May 6th. That's Monday, May 6th. Episodes start at 2 a.m. Central Time. That's U.S. Central. Monday, May 6th. Mark your calendars. But in the meantime, every Monday this month of April, we will be having clips from our favorite episodes of Vulnerability Muscle season one. So if you haven't already checked out the full episodes, go check those out. But you're all caught up. For season two. Thank you for joining another episode of Vulnerability Muscle. I hope that the stories and the insights shared really resonated with you. And if you want to help the podcast, you can do a few things. First, hit the subscribe button. If you've been moved by the conversations of redefining vulnerability, please consider leaving a review. Share your thoughts on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you're tuning in from. And don't forget to spread the word. Follow us at Vulnerability Muscle, where you can keep up with me personally at Reggie D. Ford for additional resources. And remember, embracing vulnerability is a strength. Thank you for being a part of the journey. And until next time, stay empowered, stay vulnerable, and keep flexing that vulnerability muscle. I'll see y'all May 6th.